Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host, Dan Jester, and I'm joined, as always, with Rob Fox. Oh, me first. Yeah, switching things up. Wow. Is it because you don't have a beard anymore? What do you mean? You know, you shave. What shaved. do you mean by that, Rob? Y- you shave. Are you calling Kylie a beard? Yeah, Kylie is your No, beard. we're very well, like, we're still together. Why well, nope? So I guess you just still do have the beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't shave it. Not that beard. Not that beard. No. Yeah, Not the no. important beard. Uh, I always, like, get high, and I'm like, what will I look like if I could see my chin? And then I could never go back, so I just got to wait another two months. But you, you, you know what's sad that I noticed the other day? I tweeted this. I was watching uh, the Dodgers play the Padres, and Blake Snell, the pitcher for the Padres, has a goatee, but he is so chinless that the goatee doesn't hide the fact that he doesn't have a chin. Well, goatee's only, like, half your face like it's just the it's the bottom part he right? just has yeah. it on the chin well, yeah. on where the chin should be but it's so does, does the fat come out under it like is there just like he, a, a nah. naked patch underneath the goatee no it's just he just it's just so put back on his face it's just <laughs> there's just no chin there yeah no goatees are big in the northeast like Why? my dad had a goatee for what's about up years. i feel like goatees are like a way for people that don't know how to work their facial hair but want to look older with facial Dude, hair. I had a go goatee at, at prom. You had a goatee? I, I shaved my my whatever little whiskey beard I had into a goatee for some reason. That sounds awful. Yeah, well. I feel bad for your date. Yeah, no, she left. <laughs> she left? <laughs> Mid-prom, yeah. <laughs> Wait, why'd she leave? That other voice you hear, of course, is Jake Goldman. Uh, well, I still want to know, yeah. Uh, this is hey, a, everybody. This, this, today's softcore history is it's about Dan's, Dan's prom. prom history. Dan's right? prom date in uh, 2000, what, dude, nine? She left me, dude. <laughs> she dumped you? Uh, at prom, yeah. You were your girlfriend dumped you at senior prom, and then I prom. started dancing with uh, the homecoming queen. No big deal, but whatever. Did you bang her? Uh, no, I didn't oh, actually. Did, I didn't bang anybody. You mean until, the prom uh, queen? College. You mean the prom queen, or was she, or at least the week after high school? Was she the prom queen or the homecoming? Queen? Homecoming queen. Oh, but, so not but the prom it was queen. At prom, but at prom. Uh, oh, okay. see, that's that's slick because like I thought. You yeah. know, prom queen. No, I just danced with her all night. Seems and just like a sloppy lie. We had a thing called <laughs> after prom. Uh, to like prevent us from drinking yep. and doing drugs yep. and shit. <laughs> you guys suck. Uh, Florida so we, had none yeah, of that. Yeah, no, we had uh, the mechanical bowl. My, we had, we had a uh, inflate like a bouncy castle and everything inside of the gym. My school didn't have that, but I went to a girl, a friend of mine. I went to her her prom at her school, and like yeah, they rented out like Dave and Buster's afterwards. And Pretty it much fucking sucked. Yeah. And oh. by the time like any of us would want to like hook up or something after that, it's like three in the morning. It's too tired. Yeah, I feel like Dave and Buster's would have a lot of like crawl spaces you could get a finger in, <sighs> like the Jurassic Park arcade yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, you know, because that's like got like a. Uh, curtains and, and stuff and I, you know i'm sure people did but everyone was also sober yeah also yeah. i was starting to like deal with or trying to figure out how to deal with my crohn's disease so it was a lot of hit hit or miss nights where i'm like oh i can't do that i can't eat that i'm gonna shit blood. not today no wings yeah, no. today <laughs> no wings during prom man tonight's episode of softcore history is about dan's colon <laughs> no but it is about a dope ass guy by the name of timothy dexter <laughs> Great transition. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it. about a, it's about a different cool guy. <laughs> Dan's colon's the cool. Not as yeah. cool as me, but like uh, he honestly, I have. There's a lot of parallels here. Uh, I to you, to me, no, most notably, I just I have this way of backing in everything in my life. Like yes, I've 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 had some, you know, struggle years, like one or two years, but I, I, eventually everything just works out for me. Mm-hmm. And so there's this man by the name of Lord Timothy Dexter. He was a lord? We'll get to that. All right. Uh, And I'm going to preface this. The title of this episode is The Luckiest Moron to Ever Live. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. Can't wait to hear about him. He's born in Malden, Massachusetts in 1747. All right. So the lord thing is already sus. Yep. (laughs) Well, no, you could be a lord back then. Uh, 1747 is, uh, they're still colonies. Well, he uh, dropped out of school at the age of eight. He was born in 1747. Yeah. Um, Yeah. You're born a lord. Fair. Yeah. Dropped out of school at age eight, became a (laughs) farmhand. And a leather worker, so uh, with what a move! Eight years old, <laughs> yeah. He's just like, you know it. what? I, I'm I'm done with the alphabet. Can you imagine go like just going through your Mad Minute? It's like start of third grade. You're going through the Mad Minute. You're like, you know what? I do these dumb multiplication this is problems. Bullshit. Yeah. For a minute, just to see how fast I can go. What's the point? 
Yeah, I could be getting a fucking six pence a week doing real shit. And like, instead, I'm here watching some bitch scrawl on slate with a fucking piece of chalk. I mean, this lady might as well be a witch for all I'm concerned. Yeah. I want a tan leather. Yeah. Yeah. And boy, did he. He tan leather. In more ways than one, you know? That, oh, no, boy. tell me. That sounds <laughs> it's menacing. very menacing, yeah. Well, okay, not, not to that degree, but... Uh, so he, you know, he gets into the leatherworking business. Um, his mentor actually dies. Uh, his mentor is pretty wealthy. Ends up marrying uh, his mentor's widow. Oh, rad! Is he still eight? Uh, wait, how old? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, still, so he like, feels like a jump in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, eight years old, drops out of school, gets into leatherwork during his teenage years. Uh, mentor dies, and then he marries Elizabeth Frothingham. How old? How old is he? Don't know. Don't know at the age what age to get married at, but I believe it's it's pretty early on because he's married to her for about thirty five years. So probably okay. like late teens. Yeah, so yeah, late yeah, teens, early twenties. Yeah. So uh, essentially, he's a sugar baby. Yeah, well, yeah. It seems like it worked out well for everyone because she's old and a widow and rich, and he's a young, poor but strapping and illiterate uh, piece of piece of dick. And we're gonna talk about his illiteracy. Pretty like again, the parallels are just striking with me when, when you're, we get down to it. You're literate? Well, a lot of people think so. <laughs> okay. He's, well, look, he's li- clearly not illiterate. He's reading off of this, but he's maybe what you could call like 21st century illiterate. You know? Mm-hmm. Do tell. Like, it, yeah, like, go ahead and expand like on Like bad at writing cons- if for a country where like 99% of the people can read and oh, write. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm bad at writing when I wrote for a living <laughs> yeah, for four he, he years. Yeah, you wrote for a living for four years. You're the one saying All there's a me, parallel. I'm, I'm just you know, trying to make it connect. I'm just saying, damn, maybe you should think better of yourself. That's true. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. no, never. Always <laughs> put the bar on the ground so you can step over it. It's so easy to exceed expectations when like you think nothing of yourself. Who's your own? Yeah, my my expectations, people if you s- rely on me, their expectations, my friends and family. Well, yeah, I get said They it. expect nothing out of me. I mean, look at you two. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, you're not expecting this episode to be good, right? I I was excited about it. Okay, okay. Yeah, you well, you were hyping it up. You were, you were not putting the bar on the ground for this episode. I know, which is a change of pace that I uh, regret yeah. immediately almost. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he starts being around high society through this marriage. Uh, thinks to himself, you know what? I want to be a politician. <laughs> I think that's a perfectly rational thing for an illiterate man <laughs> fucking upward in America to think. I, I think it's the next logical step in your logic. Yeah. yeah and I, I mean, look, I don't want to put that on men. To women also. Like, what, that's a very, that's the most logical, one of the most logical things ever. Shit don't change. Right? No. Hmm. Let's see. I backed my way into something I didn't earn into money after failing out of something easy. And now I have money and I've had money for long enough. He doesn't have that much money. He has a little bit of money, enough money to the point where it's probably so in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not a lot of money, but to him, it's a lot. Yeah. And he's considered he's, he's in these circles now where he can actually like get a conversation with some of the elites. Yeah. He's like bottom tier of the elites now. Right. With this marriage and with the, the money that his mentor left his widow, <laughs> which by the way, like, thanks for uh, hooking me up with the leather work, like just all the knowledge I have in my brain to yeah. be able to do my trade. And then also I'm going to bang your wife when you're in the grave. I mean, he's not banging her. Did he kill him? You know, is there any kind of conspiracy they there? They don't really, they don't really touch on that. I mean, no. we, interesting. We don't know who this guy is until just now. So interesting. Lord uh, Timothy Dexter. I will say, though, like, at what point do you just fall ass backwards into luck enough times to where you just think it's divine right Dude, at that point? You know what I mean? We I, haven't even fucking begun, okay? Yeah. yeah. And I bet not that it, many. It's got to be like two. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, this is my purpose. And it's like, it's way if, past two. That's why he has an entire episode of softcore history. <laughs> right. Okay. And well, the thing with that is, too, is like, if, if you're trying to, f- like, figure out if you yourself... Are, are divinely blessed. <laughs> yeah. You're, pro- you're not going to take very long. Most people probably wouldn't take very long to be like, God does love me. 
Yeah. Right? Like, it's, you're not going to be like, I, let, let me see 10 times. Yeah. Maybe after the 10th time, like three times, you're be like, you know what, dude? I think I'm just destined, destined to lead people. Yeah. No, I just feel like everyone in college, it was either, let's start a bar. I think I'm going to run for Congress. Yeah. So, me and my friends wanted yeah. to start a bar where we only serve food and beer in hundreds. It was called Hundos. So you had to go with a massive group. If you wanted be a, a beer, you had to order 100 beers. If you wanted sad. wings, you needed to order 100 wings. I love that. It sounds like it was come up with after doing 100 lines of cocaine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hundreds. But, Hundreds. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, we were all in fraternities. Yeah. yeah I'm going to run for Congress. I'm going to open a bar. Yeah. See only two. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're in I'm going to so, work at my dad's dealership. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Decides to become a politician. Sends in dozens of petitions to the local government who get fed up to the point this Where, is this pre-revolution? Yes. So this is, we're talking, what, what state, Massachusetts? Massachusetts. So we're talking like the, just the Massachusetts colonial like legislator. Yes. So after this constant pestering, they're just like, you know what? Let's just make shit up for him. Uh, he becomes the informer of deer. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, excuse me? <laughs> Repeat that? Is he, is he telling news to the deer? Yeah. Or is like, he, what's going he'll be on here? telling the deer what we vote on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so man, just like, tell the, an- the forest creatures <laughs> what happened here today. Yeah, pretty much. He, uh, he Wait, has what? To- what do you mean, pretty much? <laughs> that sounds insane. <laughs> Are you just confirming what we guessed? I was just joking. <laughs> yeah, so his, his, te- te- his technical job title was to keep logs and uh, just keep track of local deer population in Massachusetts. Was, there were not a whole lot. There's no technology. <laughs> what is he doing going out in the woods with a notepad? Like, oh, there's one. <laughs> Yeah, is he? He was essentially a census worker, just checking off for, for deer. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, good thing they all live in those like houses. It's all about getting your foot in the door. <laughs> Apparently, this was not enough for him to be motivated to proceed in a further career in politics. I guess he didn't fall ass backwards into like deputy of it. Yeah. No, no, yeah. he you know. he gets out of politics immediately after this. Um, he's like, you know what? It's not for me. Uh, I I tried my best as the informer of deer. Uh, but I just couldn't serve the good people with this title. This is how I'm gonna, whenever my child wants to feel important, I'm gonna be like, you go outside and just count the deer. Just count deer. <laughs> you live, hey, but it's hard me. because he can't really count because he, he, <laughs> right. he quit. second grade. That's he quit grade. in the third grade or second grade, yeah. <laughs> he quit when he was eight. He didn't even get to like 30. <laughs> He's like, I, there's more than 29 deer out there, guys. I swear to God. Yeah, I, maybe that's Way probably why he wasn't a good informer of deer. He just couldn't count them. Probably. I just, uh, what? <laughs> There's one. What's after one? Uh, so in 1775, as, as you probably are aware, the Continental Congress develops their own currency simply called the Continental Dollar to create a sense of independence from Great Britain to pay their troops in money that had really no backing and was virtually seen as worthless once the Revolutionary War came around in 1775, late 17. 17- Seventeen seventy five. Declared independence seventy six. Yeah. But they were, they, we were shooting. The first battle we were, was seventeen seventy five. Yeah, we were shooting shots at each other. Yeah. Uh, and so, th- what you're really saying is they just made money. They just made up fake money. It was uh, such a prevalent idea that uh, the phrase "it was it's not worth a continental" was kind of mainstream way to diss somebody. Like, yeah. It's not worth my time. Today we would call that "don't tread coin." What's that? It's just, it's just a it, cryptocurrency. Oh, since it's, God. No, yeah. this was the original cryptocurrency. Yeah, but since, because it's, since it's a revolution, it's don't tread on me, don't tread coin. I don't know, I'm trying mm-hmm. to just make good revolutionary theme turns. I did, like, because there's so many random ass cryptos, I thought that was a real crypto for a second. Don't tread coin? Yeah, I was like, that's probably that's a the, that's, that's the, the QAnon that's the coin. Yeah, that's the yeah. QAnon coin is yeah. don't tread coin. Right. But uh, Timothy Dexter had a little bit of faith in America as a whole. And in this currency, and he well, decided. Then I think. Then I support him completely. He decided yeah. uh, he's going to scoop up a bunch of these continental dollars for fractions of the penny. So he's a fucking big crypto investor. <laughs> it's, yeah. It sounds like he's a currency manipulator more than God anything. Damn. But uh, so after the ratification of the Constitution. No, but so hold on. That just means he's like. It just sounds to me already i'm gonna just take a guess to what i think he is you're like oh he's kind of like me that's not true what he's like is the guy who like a guy who like i went to high school with who like barely graduated high school i mean really didn't leave it knowing how to read yeah like he could read like a road sign you know (laughs) sure but not like a book (laughs) right (laughs) and it's like 2007 
He's buying Molly on the dark web. Yeah. And he gets into Bitcoin. And he's get he's just getting his change back. Yeah. In Bitcoin. Yeah. And he's like, uh, whatever. And it just kind of sits there yep. on a hard drive. Yep. Forgets about it. Somehow it pops up five, six years later. And yeah, he's like a multimillionaire. Yeah. Is that what he did with Continental Bucks? Well, here's what happens, right? So Continental Congress, um, they, they, after the ratification of the Constitution, Al- Alexander Hamilton... Well, the Constitution, so we're, flash, we're fast-forwarding like 10 years here. No. The Constitution? We, it, you've it, gone from 1775 to like 1789 or something like that. Either way. After the ratification of the Constitution, Alexander Hamilton convinces Congress to honor the Continental Dollars at a do- or 1% of their face value, so a penny for each dollar. Uh, not so good for the troops that were paid in this paper, uh, but when you go all in on the original Dogecoin at point zero 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 one like dollar or pennies, yeah, it works out for you. So he, yeah, he bought it for fractions of a penny, and then he turned that and flipped all those dollars over for a penny for every dollar. So he was picking up crushed soda cans that turned out to be made of gold, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so to shove it in everyone's face, who told him this was a all-time bad investment, he buys land in the richest neighborhood in town. Fuck yeah! And constructs the gaudiest of mansions. It was said to be so over the top that his wife moves into another home because she didn't want to be seen in such a monstrosity. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the this whole- guy's just like swinging dick right now. Yeah, he's like that's a continental he's, money. He's new money. Yeah, just new money trash. Uh, mm. So he. Constructs this giant mansion in the richest neighborhood uh, in Massachusetts, like in this uh, Malden, Massachusetts. Uh, his wife doesn't want to be seen in it. He also surrounds the place with 40 giant wooden statues of men he considered American heroes. Wooden statues, huh? Yes, including George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and himself. American he- man. American heroes. Top 10, for uh, sure. This guy, does he start putting his name on shit? Okay, so... <laughs> Under the Jefferson statue, uh, he asks a painter to write author of the Constitution, which the artist refuted with the truth that, no, Jefferson actually wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was in France when they wrote the Constitution. Uh, Yeah, Jefferson had very little, if not anything, to do with the Constitution. Right. But Dexter, believing uh, this was a shot at his intelligence... Just starts chasing the art, the artist off his property with a gun and took multiple shots, barely missing the man. I'm impressed uh, that a the artist was so slow that he was able to reload his single shot gun that many. Times. <laughs> yeah, he had to like take the pushy thing, push yeah. the ball down. And, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of steps to reloading that. Like it's, it's he was not chasing him with a Sig Sauer, like just like. I would like to think he was chasing with an AK. Yeah. It's been around forever. It was a Gatling gun that yeah. he developed himself. I feel like the <laughs> Gatling gun could have and should have been invented much earlier. Well, we didn't have buffaloes to shoot from train cars at that That's time. True. That's true. There's no need. Yeah, there's, I agree with that. Yeah. I'm sure like China and somewhere in like East Asia, they just, they had some crazy shit that like never worked out. Yeah. I believe there was a lot of kind of failed weapon. And I know they had like one, it was essentially like a, a almost an artillery piece where they would line up a lot of uh, musket looking, I guess, pipes for lack of a better term. And they would shoot round. I don't know what the caliber of round was or if it was the same as like a straight up musket. But I feel like just, you know, a crank thing that could have been invented a lot earlier. Like it just, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the type of thing where was the industrial revolution between 1770 and, 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 what 1850 was it that much different like you couldn't have come up with it a little a little I, earlier you, you would think the first thing you'd think of is how to kill people faster that's always what we think of first. yeah it's really easy to yeah. do yeah anyway do you think early on though people are like that's that's not a way to kill somebody that's that's not proper that's uh, probably, it, there's a great line in the ken burns documentary the civil war in like the first episode or maybe the second one where it's like a quote from a letter or a speech or something at the time where people were already starting to realize like, whoa, uh, these weapons are way better at killing than the ones we even used on like Mexicans 20 years ago in the Mexican war. Someone was just like, 
like saw like the destructive power, I guess essentially just the destructive power versus how bad the tactics were at the beginning, like upping the destructive power of them even more than there already was. Right. And they were just like, how fucking far is this going to go? Huh. Like in a hundred, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like in a hundred years. Oh my God. Yeah. Like if we're already here, what the fuck? Then like just explain to them. Yeah, it was much more eloquent and civil war y, but uh yeah, right, of course. Yeah, yeah, they were just like, dude, if it's already like this, yeah. Like how much time do we have left before they're just unimaginable? To think about Not what's that it, long. What's after nukes? about eighty years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nuclear bomb. Yeah. What's after nukes though? For us, like in a hundred years, what what's the weapon? They've never needed to one up a nuke. So. I think they should. I honestly think biological stuff scares me a lot more than nukes do. Yeah, nukes are it's too obvious. Like mm. a biological agent. Yeah. Yeah. Some type of virus? Yes. Oh. Some sort of bat situation. Maybe a, maybe a vaccine disguised as a savior mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. mankind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say uh, I've been shitting a lot of blood lately. Well, yeah, you know, but I don't regret taking that vaccine. I'm really tempted by this, the, the shape of this microphone. I just want to put it in my mouth. Mm -hmm. oh. It's so weird. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I should note that I'm only shitting blood because of all the dicks I'm getting fucked by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, your wife's pregnant, so you need a little action on the side. Yeah. What I'm I saying, the vaccine it. made me gay. Yes. Turn the frogs gay. Uh, a lot of his neighbors <laughs> and people he's surrounded himself with at parties loathed his existence and started mm -hmm. to fuck with him because he was incredibly stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to, right? Um, so they just gave him a bunch of dumbass advice to bankrupt his ass. Like bankrupt his ass. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. That's fucking rad. <laughs> yeah. But, so he, they, they would tell him things like, uh, they told him he should invest in bed warming pans and send them down to the Car Caribbean. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, these are pans that you would put coals in under your bed to keep you warm. Obviously needed in Massachusetts. Uh, but our boy never really left the state, so uh, he was unfamiliar with the rest of the world. He's like, "That sounds like a good idea. Let's let's get forty thousand bed warming pans and set them down in the Caribbean, where it does not necessarily get cold. No, a bed warming pan is wild. Oh, fuck, what movie is it in? Uh, it's either maybe it's ironically it might be in Pirates of the Caribbean or it might be in one of the Christmas Carol movies. What, way, what is yeah. what like? How did people's it, beds not catch on fire? It's what? It is Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. But yeah. It doesn't catch on fire because they're like lowly lit coals. They're yeah, not oh, and you okay. put it in a pan and you put it under the covers and it just <laughs> warms up the fucking situation. Yeah, she hits the, the two like goofy pirates in the head with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once they actually get there, the, the 40,000 bed warming pans, the shipment, locals thought they could actually be used to help uh, ladle molasses and sugar at the refineries. So they bought all 40,000. <laughs> okay, this is where divine right is kicking in for me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah God loves God me. likes this God guy. loves the shit yeah, out yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's go to the next point. <coughs> uh, so he thinks, of course, you know, the people of the Caribbean are indeed cold. So he doubled down and sent down a shipment of mittens and warm woolen clothing. This shipment arrives at the perfect time when an expedition to Siberia is passing through and in desperate need for warm clothing. Yep. Now I'm, now I'm convinced God loves this yes, guy. Yes. At this point. Yes. Yeah. He, he's not wrong. Everything he does is right. Yes. He should, he, 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 he just has to pull the trigger first instinct every single time. At no point should he reconsider his actions. Yeah, no, he's like a reverse Amelia Bedelia or like, uh, like Mr. Magoo or whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. just like, he's just like, he's, he does everything wrong, but it's the right thing yeah. instead of like taking it literally or I don't know. I'm trying to think. No, of it's way, like Mr. Magoo, how he keeps, he always want like just he fucks something up. happens. Like he's about to like fall into a hole, but then a ladder falls down. Oh, over I guess the he, hole. he's just Mr. Magoo. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. just Mr. Magoo. Mr. Yeah. Magoo doesn't really get hurt very often. Yeah. He causes trouble for others with her, <laughs> with his blindness. Right. Which sounds like this guy. <laughs> yeah. No, actually this guy is Mr. Magoo. Yeah. yeah. This guy has but, his blinders on <laughs> Mr. Magoo, but you just can't read. Yeah. Uh, so mad at that, their sarcastic advice made this moron <laughs> real money. Other elites told Dexter to carry coal to Newcastle which was an old idiom for a useless task because Newcastle was one of the world's biggest producers of coal. Never the one to question their advice. He <laughs> well, why would he? Why would he why question the fuck it? Would he? Why would he question it? The this bed is like someone at the roulette table being like, yeah, uh, put it on the, like, put it on zero. And there's like, no, I don't even know what the fuck the, like, 
what to even say. They're like, yeah, put it on white. Put everything on white. <laughs> and somehow that pays. So he sends an entire shipment of coal over to Newcastle. And by the time the shipment gets there over the Atlantic, coal miners in Newcastle went on strike. And the town was in desperate need of coal. <laughs> It's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. How is he this lucky? At this point, if I was one of those people, I would have just murdered him. Yeah, no, you kill him at this point. I would have just walked in and been like, eat this bullet, and then (laughs) shot him. I mean, if you want an obscure reference more so than uh, Kingsman, of course, Golden Circle. Yeah. uh, Deadpool 2, he he actually says, uh, luck is not a superpower. Ryan Reynolds says that to, um, I forget her name, from uh, Atlanta, but she's also in it. Um, forget her name, the actress. But uh, her, her, her entire superpower is luck. I, this man was the original, like, lucky yeah. superpower. No, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, something, he was an alien or a time traveler. Or, no, I mean, like, how, this is like betting the worst odds the It'll worst like, odds horse. See, I think every time and hit it. Right. Yeah. Part of like so as I'm going through this, I'm like, is he actually a moron? Or is he like just a savant? Like, is he seeing no, into he's the a moron. future? I think he's a moron. I don't like him. I already hate I, him. I hate his guts. Yeah, these people are like, I would yeah, be man, t- t- like they're to your horse track thing. They're if like, we, Yeah, uh, bet uh bet uh cripple tard. <laughs> bet the horse cripple tard. It's and nine thousand to one. Just yeah, keeps fucking winning. <laughs> yeah. Limping up to the gate. Yeah, yeah. Like the other eight horses, all just like all break their legs, their legs snap, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> like a thunderstorm just, hits and they all happen to be line. in the wet part. But yeah, the and like the lightning. Cripple hits tard all of them. isn't. Yeah. yeah, you know. No, it's uh, like I would be like going to these parties. Like I'm sick of going to these this wood statue ass motherfuckers house. Yeah, and going to these parties and see more wood statues. Like, well, here's fucking, the thing: this Newcastle deal puts him over the fucking top. He was rich. Now he's rich, rich. Like he's like one of the richer people yes. in the group. He's yeah. like the richest dude he's, in town. He's of this. rich enough to actually get it official that Thomas Jefferson wrote the Constitution. <laughs> yeah, he can he can put it in a paper and people will believe yeah. it. Yeah. So after this, of course, this this massive deal. He starts to he starts to feel himself. He's like, I can't do any wrong. How can you not be feeling yourself? Yeah, you you. There is nothing pointing to the fact keeps, that it's not working. He keeps like <laughs> he fucking <laughs> his first shot was a heat check. It wasn't even like he was making shots and then he heat checked. <laughs> he just his threw it first out. shot was a heat check, and he keeps heat checking. Yeah, and he keeps making them. It's fuck this guy. All right, well, let's get on to the next I don't brilliant want to. business move. Uh, he buys a shit ton of Bibles on the cheap that he sends down to the Caribbean because every family should have a Bible. And unknowingly did so in the midst of a massive uh, push by missionary groups down in the Caribbean. So they bought all the Bibles. All right, well, that one... A little bit more, makes a little bit more sense, right? Yes. And yeah. all, like, when was there not a massive missionary push in the Americas? Anywhere. Ever, yeah. So the, you know, maybe that one's that one's sensible. that's more understandable, that's, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was ra- a mid-range too. He <laughs> yes. shot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This might be too. He rounds up a bunch of stray cats for free and just sends them down. To okay, no, that's no, not that's the same insane. thing. That's that is insane. No, that's, no, that's insane. That's, that's, that's fucking insane. insane. That's not no. the same thing. No, there's no thing. sentence. He's ever- like, hey, let's send non-refrigerated hot pockets to the fucking Caribbean. Yeah, because like that sounds good. There's no like, time. That's, that's stray cats. Not, not like, once. What are you talking about? Like. You, there's no one that rounds up stray cats. <laughs> that's not that's, crazy. That's not fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. The only time in history I know for a fact that that wasn't the case was one time, it was kind of like the fall of the ancient Egyptians. Like there was like the last battle that they kind of fought where they were still worth the shit. Uh, and the Persians were like, all right, I know what to do to beat these fucks. Uh, they just grabbed as many cats as they could. And strapped the cats to their soldiers because Egyptians worshiped cats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the Egyptians were like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I can't fucking shoot an arrow at these people. Like, I can't fucking stab, stab at these people. Right, that's and, brilliant. And kill a god. Yeah. That's the only time rounding up cats makes sense. In the history of Earth, <laughs> well, that's the only fucking Well, actually, time. it sounds like it's going to be good a second time. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> two for two. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, it's the perfect move I'm every time, Rob. leaving to go round up cats. <laughs> so he's round, he rounds up the cats, and he's, you know what? They des- these families down in the Caribbean, they deserve a house pet. Uh, sends all these stray cats down on a boat, and 
everybody Wait, buys them can because I guess prevents plague. Uh, yeah, prevents uh, rat infestation. So yeah, yeah plague. So they're, uh, they're just rounding up all these cats. They're buying all these cats just to you know get the uh, the rat population under control down in the Caribbean. This guy just wants to help out all these poor families in the Caribbean. Yeah, <laughs> it's his like it's his money maker. It's what like, if yeah. what if this guy really is like divinely blessed? And he was, this is just like, so we have like teen Jesus. What if he's just stupid Jesus? Uh, he, he makes, he, it gets dark. Okay. Your own imbecile bit. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going through the fun and flirty Jesus just right cartooning now. his way through helping people. Yeah. He Mr. Magoo's divinity. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Jesus didn't make a profit. Though. Okay. Well, here's also a, like another reasonable thing to do. He starts buying up all the whale bones that wash up on shore in Boston. Of course he does. Sends them over to France because, you know, corsets and shit. Uh, it was during this time that it became fashionable that men also wore corsets in France. Corsets. Corsets. Uh, that's, that's not necessarily. It's between. It's either. It's either. It's you can corset it's and a, corset. You can it's chug a, on a. It's a corset. You can chug no, it's, it's, it's both. Either way. Like, you can come after me for uh, my pronunciation I'm going to stand with things. Dan. He brought a good topic today. <laughs> He's making me insane. Does it mean it's not the right pronunciation? Right, no, right. it is the right pronunciation. It could be either or. Just, I know when I'm wrong, when the Delco-ness <laughs> comes out, this is not one of those cases. I think you just wanted to pronounce it like Corvette, but it's not. <laughs> Dude, a, a Corvette I mean, to corset? be fair, I can't back you up here because maybe that's why I'm doing it. I'm also from Florida. Yeah. Corvettes yeah. are tight. They are tight. <laughs> yeah, Corvettes are sick. Uh, please feel free to DM us or add us whether what the correct pronunciation is because it's fucking It's, it's why either. You, why don't you put up your fucking pinky finger and yeah. sip on that table Are you wearing a chica? whalebone corset? Corset? Uh, However you said it If wrong. anyone in this wedding. fucking table would wear a corset, <laughs> it'd be Rob. Yeah, of course I'd wear a corset. Well, they're just called Spanx now. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, he sends over the whalebones, makes a profit off all, all these fucking French men. Getting their corsets off. I don't think that that's dumb, though. That's fine. He he knew there was already a market that's for That's another it. mid-range, too, for the, yeah. said. The, yeah. the female market, but he had no idea about well, that. Well, no, but I mean, there was still, still, a, there was a, market still a market for it. He didn't know the market it. was going to get So the Bible... Right, he wasn't like a total idiot. No, like the Bible never really the leaves the state, so he's very unfamiliar with the world. He knew enough that there was a, cor- the, a need for the bones somewhere. Okay. Like, before he was sending fucking cats to the Caribbean yeah. here, and like... Bed pans. And coal to yeah, yeah, coal, coal country. Yeah, coal to literally... It's like sending ice to Antarctica, dude. Like, yeah. you don't do that. Yeah. So, the, the Bibles and the corset bones... I don't know. It kind of worked out for him. Now I'm saying corset. Fuck you. It's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's wrong. It's corset. Correct. No, it's... Oh, my God. It's corset. Either way. After all the success, he decides, you know what? It's about time I write a little self-help book. How to send well shit to the Caribbean? As, well, he should believe that. That is a rational thought for him to have. Honest to God, the Caribbean to him is probably just some mythical place that has a hundred percent, or like a hundred times return on spent. Yeah, like yeah. its ROI is unreal. It's just a magic so fucking bull island. The the book is titled "A Pickle for the Knowing Ones" or "Plain Truths in a Homespun Dress." What the fuck does that mean? So throughout the 44 pages... Yeah, I can't imagine that even makes sense to people at the time. (laughs) What the fuck is that? It's 44 pages. It has no punctuation at all. (laughs) (laughs) It's just stream of consciousness. Self-help book? It's random capitalization. So it's somebody's fucking Twitter thread. Misspelled words uh, put together without a whole lot of sense. Uh, Here's a a little taste of it. All right, this is how it starts. I swear to God, I've seen 20 of these Twitter threads... In the last year, be retweeted with a qu- like a quote tweet that's like "Yes, go off," or like one hundred emoji for forty four pages though, not one hundred and forty characters or whatever it is now. Two ninety. I get that, but my point is uh, okay, we've well, not hmm. evolved at all. Would you like me to read a passage? I would yeah, love of that. Of course, I would. I am E, the first Lord in the United, spelt Y O U, N I T E D, states of a. Mercerary, now of Newbury Port, it is the voice spelled with an S of the people P E O P E L, and I can't help it, and so let it go. Now, as I must be Lord, there will follow many more lords pretty soon, for it don't hurt a cat nor 
the mouse, nor <laughs> the sun, nor the water, nor the ear, the gal, all. Is he just <laughs> listing shitty C's? Is he just listing shitty C's at this it, point? It reads like a Charlie Kelly note that he leaves yes. in Always yeah. Sunny. Yeah, that like legitimately. No, it's. It, I'm surprised there's not more symbols. I can't. That, it's, that's it's, the end of the past. It's incre- right? I'm sorry I read it so slow. It's, it's fucking, yeah, everything I, it is so wrong. Difficult. How could you have read it faster? <laughs> None of these words are words. So, so uh, after a review of his first edition uh, was trashed by an editor. Uh, or not being words? It had, it had no punk- punctuation. Uh, Dexter added two pages at the end of the book with uh. periods commas and question marks with the instructions uh founder mr printer the no one one complaint of my book the first edition had no stops i put enough here <laughs> and they made pepper and salt as they please <laughs> that's that's a joke that's not real. No, that's, either, that's a burn. That, that's, that's a either, joke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's either an incredible power move. <laughs> that's a power move. Or There's no way we are not. telling the tale of an actually <laughs> mentally handicapped person who was first sexually assaulted by his employer's <laughs> widow. <laughs> And then everyone was so mean to him for being a mongoloid <laughs> that they kept giving him bad bad investment advice because they were just prejudiced, and it kept working out because God was like, "Fuck you! You're not gonna be mean to was, this fucking retarded he's person." Still skin. <laughs> yeah, just churning gold out. These are the only two options right now that he was actually mentally handicapped. Well, he only went. He only went to school till he was eight. Yeah, but um, that yeah, was probably so too hard. That's hilarious, though. He just prints out two pages to add to the end of the book, just full. The whole, entire two pages are just punctuations that, I mean, I, and just pepper and salt as you please. I, so this is what makes there's you no think way. he's self-aware is yeah. the pepper and salt as you please. But uh, there's there's a non-zero chance he thought that's how books worked. <laughs> no, it's not a cover. It send me back a few periods if you if you don't use them all. Like what? What? Yeah. Like there's a period bank. So it's a little bit self-help. It's a little bit him just kind of stroking himself off for 44 pages. But there's well, also... It's, you know, those <laughs> it's, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nonsense. There's also <laughs> a bunch of pages where he just... It kind of takes a dark turn where he just talks about how he's been in hell for 35 years, married uh, married to his wife. What? He's bagging on his wife? He, started, he bags on his wife Maybe for Rob's good, right. I think I, I, think <laughs> I, I think, might have nailed yeah. this here. This is an actual... <laughs> like handicapped person in distress <laughs> <laughs> so he would have guests over all the time this book's a cry for help <laughs> <laughs> so he would have guests over all the time he had a bunch of parties and stuff and anytime they would come over he would keep his wife upstairs and he would uh whenever she would yell down and guests would be like oh who is that he would uh say oh no the house is haunted that's an old <laughs> That's an old sea hag ghost. <laughs> he, just said, he said the house is haunted. <laughs> by some fucking... Like, Dude, by some course, banshee woman. Of course they hated this guy. Oh my god. Wait, can you imagine putting... Like, imagine, like, you, I come over to your apartment... And Kylie's just yelling out from the bedroom, Dan is Jake here. I'm like, Who's what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, dude, what's that? You're like, nah, man, apartment's haunted. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, dude, we know you have a wife. We know her voice. Yeah, and he would bring over like his mistresses and stuff and sleep with them downstairs. Okay, while wait, his- wait, 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 wait. You just like- I, I retract my previous <laughs> yeah. theory. His mistress, well, I guess he, he's got this money. This guy is actually fucking evil, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Is he anything? I... This person, He's like an id. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no ego. It's there's like, no super ego. It's just an id. I feel like this he's is just how... just like, like, one day, he's just like, me hate reading. And then the next day, he's like, me fuck dead man's wife. And then the next day, he's like, me get cats. Well, he considers... And then the next day, he's dead man's like, wife a ghost Wife well. ghost. Yeah, wife. Me fuck not wife. <laughs> <laughs> he's just an id. He's, like, he's it, just an id. It's like honestly, if you left I think half the modern just kept drinking for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, like that's him. Like it, modern day um, <laughs> Timothy Dexter, I think a lot of parallels here to Dustin Johnson, the golfer. No, there's no <laughs> parallels. No, no, there's, Dustin Johnson, the golfer. He practiced. Like have, a, he practiced golfing enough to make him rich. He's Dustin, just really good at golf. 
But like, like, <laughs> but what's this guy good at? Is if Dustin jo- if Dustin uh, Johnson made his millions from throwing golf balls into the pond at the course, maybe. Yeah, like that's a fair point. Uh, so they ended up uh, him and his wife and all his mistresses. He ends up with two kids uh, who are both raging alcoholics. Uh, I believe. Of course, they are. The uh, the archive thinks they're ghosts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the archive. Uh, uh, there's uh, nothing you can't solve by saying it's a ghost. The ci- yeah, the city says, uh, the city archives say one's an alcoholic and one is, like, beyond an alcoholic. So probably whatever deficiency his do you father under- has. Do you even understand how soaked in liquor you have to be to be considered beyond an alcoholic? In that time? In that era, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to be falling over, like, making out with horses. It's mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, he starts to refer to himself as Lord Timothy Dexter, despite... So, oh, he, so he wasn't a lord before now. He was never a lord. Uh, he has no claim to royalty, uh, and all, he also regards himself as a fierce American patriot. Well, I can't deny that so far. No. Uh, but I mean, you can I don't know where the lord, he just like attitude. He just wanted to sound kind of like elitist and like he had money. Well, it's like when lawyers put Esquire at the end of their name. <laughs> So honestly, though, at the time, it's more like, what's his name again? Timothy Dexter. Mm-hmm. My name is Timothy Dexter, like head caliph of the, of the whatever, <laughs> yeah. American patriot. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't be a lord and an American right. patriot at that time. No. It's like he's like, yeah, I run a caliphate and I love America. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest caliphate in all of Catholicism. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Britain was, we thought Britain was evil at this point in time. We weren't, weren't wrong, by the way, but... Like that, I mean, good lord! I mean, it's I hate to just like break Godwin's law here, but it's like call me like Hair Dexter, uh, like it's the 1940s. Like I'm Hair Dexter, uh, uh, Colonel in the Wehrmacht, and uh, I'm the biggest American patriot you'll ever America. fucking meet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although um, you know what? What's his name? Charles Lindbergh might have been able to check both those boxes. Uh, so it's true. Still He's not true. as dumb. He uh, not as all the, no, could use a plane. All yeah. the elitists they start to kind of. They're like, fuck this guy. Every every time we talk to him, he turns our ideas to gold. Uh, so they stop coming around. So he should have killed him. So he starts surrounding himself with like this ragtag group of other lunatics. <laughs> uh, one of these weirdos was uh, Jonathan Plummer, who was a self-proclaimed professor who, despite lacking any scientific education or training, would preach his uh, scientific knowledge upon anyone who would listen. He was actually just a fisherman who sold porn on the side. <laughs> 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 I love the scoop already. It's a real Ocean's Eleven of idiots. I was gonna say, this, is, yeah. this is this is America's first Rat Pack. Yeah, it's like, but uh, they were actual rats. Like they were just like <laughs> bang, like street people. <laughs> just like I'm hearing like a little less conversation going. It's like, Again, all right, here's Larry the porn <laughs> fisherman. I hate <laughs> keep making these always sunny parallels too, but like it's it's like Frank, it's Charlie, it's all the, the like people that live Rickety on the cricket. bridge. Yeah, Rickety but cricket. with monograms and top hats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's hear who else. There was a. They also had a fortune teller that was part of the group named <laughs> Madam Hooper, who he relied on heavily after uh, the other elites stopped giving him advice. Um, obviously, he just rode with her because he it, couldn't miss. He, I mean, what? he can ride with whatever he wants to ride with. <laughs> the worst advice you could have given him made him millions. So why would. Yeah. You, it, it's all up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it all came to a head. Um, and. He what got, came he to got, a head? He, like his life. So oh. he wanted to. He found himself curious about his legacy. He had. Well, it's like uh, Alexander wept for there were no more worlds <laughs> to conquer. What, I've, I've, this guy wept because there was more, no more dumb shit to send to the Caribbean. Pretty much, he yeah. was like, I did Bibles, I did cats, I did mittens, I whale did, bones, I did whale, I did whale bones. I sent coal to coal place. What else is left? <laughs> Those are all the things I know. Those are the things. <laughs> so he just wanted to know what his legacy would be, like who would actually care when he does pass. So he faked his own funeral. <sighs> so okay, all right, um, sure. Yeah, no, he he had the event. He built up a mausoleum, uh, built mausoleum, mausoleum. Yeah, said that for himself on the property, um, which was fine for a fake funeral, but was later deemed to be unsafely built. What, of course it, it was. It, will it kill the dead guy? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can go, in, pass uh, oh, you can for go inside a mausoleum. True, true, true. So, um, yeah, so, uh, they didn't enjoy the whalebone structure, I assume. <laughs> it was made of bedpans, whalebones, and cats. Right, yeah. <laughs> Bibles. That's Living what cats. this industry Living was stray built cats on. cats were a third of the structure. That's what this actually. empire is built on, damn it. Yeah. Uh, so he, um, 3,000 people show up to the funeral. 
What? Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. Holy shit. To like, celebrate? Pretty much the entire town. It's really a block party. Yeah. Uh, and he sees his family. What year is this, by the way? Um, Where are we at? It doesn't actually give a year. I have the year of his death, but I don't have the year of... this. Is, I think this is shortly before his actual death. Okay. So, kind of... This is like early 1800s. Yeah, yeah. Sees his family, sees his wife, sees his kids. It's fine with his kids, but uh, sees his wife isn't crying. Bitch. How old is his wife at this point? <laughs> She's up there. Yeah. She, she lives a good life. Well, maybe not so much, but... Well, no. She's a ghost. She's, like, a ghost. She's been dead so for years, people, bro. So many people at that funeral had to be like, hold on. <laughs> I thought you were a ghost. So because she wasn't crying hard enough, he ends up popping out of the casket <laughs> and starts to beat her with a cane. <laughs> the grand finale. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The crowd, it's... all in attendance of the funeral for the man they had currently just seen beat his own wife, uh, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to react. Well, how could they? <laughs> what, do you, what do you do in that? How if, could I, if I'm at a funeral and a man jumps out of the casket and starts beating his wife, I'm not intervening. What are you supposed to do? I He could be a zombie. Yeah. So... Lord Timothy Dexter and the entire group just decide to act as if nothing happened. <laughs> and they spend the rest of the funeral acting as if they were hosting a huge party. First mm. off, that's exactly what I would do if I was a guest at that funeral. <laughs> is be like, babe, it's the Dexters. Just fucking forget it. Let's just get a drink. Yeah, they're the one with the giant wood statues out front. You, yeah, I we think told I, him to sell coal to... Yeah, it, I, know, it, I know he's called his wife a ghost He also thinks times. he's just swinging his cane in his spirit. So... <laughs> Yeah, right. He must be just shocked when it's well, hitting. At this point, I'd be like, contact. I don't know. Like, I, at this point, if you're like, he's calling her a ghost, and then he's playing dead, I'd be like, I'd just be like, because my wife would, of course, be bothering me about this. But I don't know. They're into ghost play. Let's just fucking forget it. Our, our friends are here. We don't have to talk to them. Yeah. Let's just have a good There's time. There's 3,000 other Christ. people yeah. here. Yeah. Fuck. Let's just not, let's just get over it. At this fucking insanely built mansion in the late 1700s, early 1800s, that was just like... For the also, time, was it open casket? Comedy. Like, was it awake? People could walk up. They should have clearly seen he was alive. <laughs> I think it was a closed casket. All right. I believe it was a closed casket. I think he put a hole in it too, so he could peek and see. Like, who was? <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Can you imagine people like putting their hand on? They just look in. Just like, <laughs> uh, this is a little visual humor, but yeah, like just peeking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so eventually, Timothy Dexter actually does die at the age of fifty-nine on October twenty-six. 1806. He leaves all of his money for the most part to charity. Doesn't give, really give a dime to his kids or uh, his his wife. I, I don't actually know if she survives this long. But I think she does outlive him. Uh, That's insane. Statues outside of his house, which cost him thousands of dollars, sold for just a few bucks each. Well, they were wood. Yeah. <laughs> How much? Probably, wood warps. Yeah. Like wood, wood with inaccurate facts on them. <laughs> And uh, like his, what? his house go, turns into a tavern, uh, but eventually is destroyed when painters decide to remove old paint using torches. Hey. Which might be the craziest part about this. <laughs> How do we get the paint off? No, Burn it. it was probably his fucking friends who were friend, fake friends who were still alive who were like, yeah, use torches to get the paint off. Yeah. Uh, it was like, fuck that, guy, uh, fuck that guy's house. It was Madam Hooper, the fortune teller, and the fishing porno guy. They probably I were the ones stripping the know more about the porn than fish, to be <laughs> yeah, honest. Yeah. Yeah, you know a little bit about Johnny P and his, like, fucking fish porn. <laughs> was it, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, I assume they were two separate businesses. I'm assuming they are. I bet they merged. He probably had some mermaid. Yeah, I think it was mostly stuff. just that, like, you know, he was putting on shows for his fi uh, fishermen. Right? He gets lonely at sea. Yeah, like a little solo good, show. Need to make some good porno. For so he's like puppeteering the fish. See, I imagine he, just, I don't know what, he drew yeah. little cartoons. Is what yeah, I, I think imagine. it was like the Randy Marsh scene in South Park. <laughs> it's where, like the computer and it yeah, comes yeah, down. Yeah, it's yeah. like fake, like drawing like the scenes you uh, want. Asian gangbang. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I imagine this fish porno was like. Yeah. Yeah, so that is the life and legacy of Lord Timothy Dexter, the luckiest moron to ever live. What, what are we taking away from this? I learned nothing. <laughs> I learned nothing from this. What are you supposed to learn from that? I what learned... are you supposed to learn about basketball when you go to the YMCA and some asshole shows up drunk and somehow makes his first 12 shots <laughs> from that, three? That was mostly intramurals. Yeah. What, yeah. Are you, what are you supposed to learn about the sport from that? Not a lot. Right. You learn nothing from it. <laughs> Maybe uh, don't be a dick and give bad advice because it might haunt you in the long run. 
I think maybe everyone. I, what I learned is everyone in this story was an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Like every, everyone was trying to sabotage each other, and the guy who just blindly believed in himself and like did not. Oh, that's a good lesson. Yeah, yeah. Always blindly believe in yourself. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Fake it till you make it. That got look. I don't want to get. I'm, this is, I think even people who voted for Trump would agree with this. His greatest strength is pure fucking ignorance. No, like no. self. He, like he believes in himself yes, more than anyone in the world. Yeah, self confidence. Yeah, irrational self confidence. No, it's you know, it's like I can't even say this though because it's like you know, like there's like psychopaths that like their charm brings people in, right? Because they're just so like in their own head. But this guy's not that even. He gets com- like transformed into this person. Part, part of me like assumes, yeah, that he's <clears throat> like, oh, oh, okay, Cole to to Newcastle, Cole. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And like runs off and does it. Yeah. Like he's not like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like he's like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, I'm no, going to do gosh, that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then he goes like, I can't, I'm trying to think of like a, a, a parallel in life where I've had this happen where it's like, oh, kick rocks. You and fucking like, haven't. Yeah, no, none of this. I've never experienced anything like this. So I can't relate to it. He's but like a, you get like a little bit of the crypto thing, <clears throat> but then he starts rounding up cats. <laughs> and whale bones. By the way, what a fucking boat to be on. It's, it's like, just you and fucking 30,000 cats. Like, <laughs> just for fucking weeks. <laughs> Can you imagine being the crew just yeah, anytime how many he crew sends members stuff? just fucking off themselves? Like, oh my God. Wait, what is this guy doing again? Oh, he's sending coal pans to the Caribbean. Fuck, okay. Well, the coal pans would be fine. No, but I'm still saying like, Every time you're doing a shipping manifest for this dude, it's like, where is this shit going? Wait, Cole is going to Newcastle. Dude, I don't right. really care about that. If you're you're on the ship, you're getting paid. I'd be yeah. like, yeah, whatever. It's fucking <laughs> yeah, but what he wants. W- once I start to pick up on that, if he keeps using the same ships, I'd be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of a cut myself, and uh, I'm going to blindly believe this man, too. I would, I would cut myself. I would also start suggesting insane shit to him, <laughs> like everyone else. At least you're getting paid off it. Yeah. His asshole friends weren't getting paid. The shipping guys no, were. No, they were simply just trying to like destroy his life, and it only made him stronger. It got him so strong, he jumped out of a casket and beat his wife at his fake funeral. So, <laughs> and then they party that. And then nothing happened to him. That's also, that's another lesson learned. If you have enough money, things go away. People look no, the other way. I actually, do, I totally disagree. Well, I don't disagree with that sentiment. I disagree with why it happened. It happened because everyone knew that he was fucking crazy. And they were like, just ignore it. Just, there's nothing we can do. Just ignore it. And we'll just we'll just power on like it's fucking normal. We all have people like that in our lives. We're just like, he is yeah. like that. That's what he does. Yeah. And we're just going to try to have a good time anyway. Yeah. I tried to bankrupt him a few times. He just got richer. <laughs> so I don't know. Richer than just us. Bounce yeah. back. Yeah. He um, so yeah, he, he married Rich. He was a sugar baby to start. He invested in the original cryptocurrency, which is the continental dollar for fractions of pennies and made fractions of dollars. I love that for him. At least he did that on his own, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably by accident. Look, look, simply he, because he was a patriot. He bet on America. Yeah. yeah. And really, that is the Then he lesson. doubled down. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's the real, the lesson. real lesson. Bet on America. Always bet on uh, old glory behind us. Bet on America. Bet on cats. Bet on coal. Bet on coal. He, he's fucking Charlie Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a successful Charlie Kelly. He, he, the cats. The cats alone. Really, it's to the cats. Well, also that and collecting what whale, amounts to garbage. Whale bones, <laughs> worthless currency. Yeah. Coal. The fucking parallel. Uh, fucking that's, Bibles. All right, yeah. Fuck, no, that's Charlie fuck Kelly. Fuck religion. No, it's not me. It's that, that, was good, that, was that, was, that was actually a good investment. It's Charlie Kelly. Yeah. The, seriously, the only thing out of that entire story was the whale bones and the Bible. And really, the whale bones. What about his found, memoirs? His self-help book? His self-help book was just a... Uh, that was just kind of a how-to. Like, if you could decode it, I'm sure. I suppose that was his one heat <clears> check <throat> that didn't but, make it in. But, but like that his, was second, like a, his second go-around where he added those two pages for the second edition? Oh, yeah. kind of makes mean, up for it. It's a wash. Yeah. It wasn't a failure because yeah. he had the power. He broke even there. Yeah. What is the, what's the equivalent of that? So this, that heat, the book heat check, the book heat check was not even a half-court shot. That was like... a. a 
I rebounded it under the basket and immediately chucked it like there was one second left, except there wasn't. There was, like, there was 15 of minutes, yeah. Right. And it was behind his back. That, and then he missed that, <laughs> yeah. obviously. But, fuck, I don't know. Somehow, like... But then it bounced off the rim back to him as he's running to half court, and then it bounces off his knee and went in the hoop. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he honestly... Made, he got an assist off it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like it's, yeah, like something stupid like that. Yeah. Fuck this guy, but also good for this guy. I don't know how to feel about him, Dan. Right. Like, I never... I just wanted to go back to our roots for the podcast. We started with a very obscure man that not a whole lot of people know about. How'd Somebody, you find out? How'd you find out about this guy? I got my sources. Don't worry. No, what, I mean, no. He, what? he just Googled something. Yeah, no, I, there's certain there's certain ways yeah. that, you know, the, the important thing to remember Google is, machine. is that, uh, like, the first guy, what, we were like, oh, he's like a vampire or whatever. Like, this guy is, like, brain damaged. Like, he's just, like... Like you said, it's the world's luckiest moron or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Simple Jack. Like, it's yeah. fucking... What? But and the, and the funniest part is, too, like, not a one that endears yourself, himself to you. No. Well, none of these guys do. Like, William Walker, Boston Corbett. I mean, yeah. I guess uh, Corbett at least killed uh, John Wilkes Booth. Right. I, I just don't... I don't, like... Can you imagine watching radio and just not liking radio? Right. <laughs> Like, fuck radio. Yeah. Like, this radio sucks. Piece of shit. That's how I feel right now. Yeah, like, if radio was a piece of shit. It's like, you feel bad about the shed scene, obviously. But then, like, well, he no, just... The, he's doing the shed scene <laughs> to his wife. Oh, yeah. No, it's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Throw balls at the shed. The ghost is in there. Yeah. Right. Like, it's fucking the opposite. <laughs> so, if they ever actually made a movie about this guy, who do you think would be the perfect guy to play Lord Timothy Dexter? Uh, so, uh, he's 59 when he dies. Yes. So you probably want someone in their 30s playing him. Sounds like so Charlie. 47. Day. He's born in 47, and like all the shit kind of happens around Revolutionary War after Revolutionary War. So, so most of his cool shit, yeah, happens in his 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we get uh, Charlie Day? <laughs> yeah, Charlie, Charlie Day is the guy, Charlie yeah. yeah. Honestly? It's a layup. If but. I wanted to go like an actual dramatic actor, I um, would say... I don't even know if this would be a drama. There's no way it could be a drama, right? It'd be funnier as a drama. <laughs> It'd be funnier as well. You, the thing is, everything that happens is is so, like, I was going to say this actually is that this was an interesting podcast because um, we couldn't say funnier things than what happened. Yeah, no, that was the whole point. Like, right. I, sorry. Like a lot the of jokes times, write themselves. Like yeah. funny things happen. It's like, oh yeah, that's where they got baboons. Let's talk about baboons for fucking ten minutes. Yeah. This was like, like, how do you add commentary to that? It's again, it's like kind of like satirizing Trump. Like, how do you make that funnier? No, like, the one Trey he's Parker said that. Like, you can't make it funnier than what he's already doing. Yeah. And with this, like, you can't make it funnier than what he's already doing. So you have to, you might as well play it straight. So with this story, you got to play it straight. It's kind of like, honestly, if anything. Uh, Kind of like the big short, you know what I mean? Like everything's so ridiculous that yeah. you just kind of let got to like let normal actors do it mm -hmm. for the most part. I know Carell's a comedic actor, but he was playing a dramatic part in that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, seriously, I think her commentary was us crying, laughing at what had right. happened to this man. That was okay. Like that's the entire commentary on that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. His wife's a yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. I made it easy for you tonight. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. It was very nice. You didn't have to talk tonight. It was just Dan reading, <laughs> just reading the notes. Yeah, this this man's entire resume is just absurd. So for that, I thank him. Yeah, right. Yeah, thanks for making it easy today. <laughs> yeah. Fucking not Lord a guy you're going to read about in history, Lord Dexter. You didn't learn about this guy in class. How probably did, not? Do we really ever figure out what his note. actual net worth was? I can I can look it up now. Yeah, let's. I I want to know what he. Just even what he made on one deal and then plug that into a fucking inflation it's calculator. It's going to make you so angry. <coughs> God. No, it's going to be angry because they gonna, probably won't have it. Yeah. Especially in like modern dollars. Yeah, inflation <laughs> calculators usually only go back to the 19th century. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's I mean, hard to get one for revolutionary times. They're going to be like, well, this continental dollar is equivalent to, blah, 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 blah. you know, it's like yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, My guess is, though, I mean, are we thinking north of $100 million in modern dollars? I mean, if he's doing coal sales and, like, shipping 40000 of anything. Not seeing anything. Yeah. Unfortunately. Millionaire, but. Well, if he's I mean, a millionaire then. Yeah. Then. I mean, he's a 
fucking hundred millionaire. Let's just look up inflation calculator. What is a million dollars worth in whatever the earliest year you can do it? Eighteen hundred. Oh, the earliest they had nineteen thirteen. What the? No, fuck? you can plug it in. Earlier. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we gotta know. You can say you can say something earlier. Say like seventeen seventy five. Yeah. Well. If you can do it. Well, no, he would have been a millionaire by the 1800s anyway. Yeah, so, so just, just say 1800. 1800. Yeah. yeah. Calculate that inflation. God damn it. All these calculators are 1913. But All right. Oh, 21 million. Wow. It says. That's wow. it? In, in their time, to- like now? Yeah. Oh, all right. That's so still, just rich. That's rich. That's rich. One million. One Oh, okay. So uh, he was probably he was probably pushing like sixty million. I bet you're not a millionaire when you. I mean, you are technically a millionaire. I guess you have a million dollars in assets, but yeah, a million bucks ain't that much to be quite honest. Yeah, he's not part of the three comma club. Trace Comas, yeah, no. But I'm guessing he probably had several million dollars, which means he was pushing. I bet he was pushing eighty. To I mean that million. Newcastle deal, yeah, for sure. Cole, yeah. Cole, yeah. Cole, definitely Cole pays. That had to be like peak coal just about, well, oh. the 19th century, at least in general. If you can sell coal to a coal mining city, that's insane, dude. Dude, like, I got to oh. think, though, uh, he had, maybe he had somebody to like influence the union workers in Newcastle to just stop. A lot of this stuff sounds like he had someone on the inside taking care of it, but like, so who would he like, have known? He true. was like an idiot king, like a savant, like pulling strings, but he like presented as like a... He was actually a genius who was like, yeah, pulling the strings, but... Who's acted he gonna, like a bumbling idiot? Yeah. I'm sorry, but like, who's he? He's not calling anyone. Well, who he's, does he need to fool? Like is someone right? in New, a bunch of people in Newcastle. He's in Massachusetts. He never leaves the state. Right. How is he? Remember, he uh, he shot the artist who told him the truth that shot Thomas at. Jefferson. Yeah, he shot at that. Thomas Jefferson did not write the Constitution, <laughs> but he was displeased with that knowledge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, hell no. Yeah. Fucking Tommy, Tommy J did. To be fair, though, if in your whole life, you... <laughs> have never really been wrong. Never really been wrong. Why would you assume you were wrong then? It's true. It's true. It's blasphemy, really. So, yeah, you're I saying think God's he, wrong. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I think he is an idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's clearly a moron, <laughs> oh, but not a, not a lovable one. <clears throat> the whole thing's a bit. The, yeah. No, I don't think anything's a bit. I, I still question if he could read. He can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. based sure, on surely his can. writing. I mean, and if you look at old letters, like there are a ton of misspellings and shit like that. Like or just changed like, spellings. Yeah, even. changed spellings yeah. too. But like, mm, no, he just sounded. That just sounded like it was written in crayon. <laughs> and that is the story of our boy Lord Timothy Dexter. For Rob Fox and Jake Goldman, I'm Dan Jester. Hey, hold on. Just hold got, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, share, with your, friends. share with your friends, leave leave, leave reviews. a review that always bumps us up the charts. Yep. Check out uh, Coop's podcast, I Kind of Blast. Yeah, thanks again, Coop. Switching for us Coop's today, as always. Right now. <laughs> and Drinking Bros. History. And Drinking yeah, Bros. History, yeah. history uh, video Drinking Bros. History on YouTube. And uh, yeah, subscribe to that. Give us a review. Uh, yeah. And uh, actually, I want to leave funny reviews. And the funniest review, I will pick that person to pick my next topic. So... All right. Yeah. yeah, and also send us topics. Uh, a lot of you guys have been sending me good shit. I just put it on a big fucking list because uh, I get sent a lot of good stuff. So um, keep sending. If you ever have any topic you think would be good, like DM. Like if, uh, and, you know, if you want me to do it, DM me. If you want Dan to do it, DM Dan, so on and so forth. Um, but, like, anyone who DMs me, I put it on a list, and I'll use it eventually, if not immediately, because sometimes I'm lazy and, like, I can't think of anything. So Yeah, it happens. Jake mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Don't let me just go to the 1960s drug well every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got to have a talk yeah. offline. Okay. Anyway, you just got soft served. Pew, pew. That was a great topic.